You are required for nothing, least of all for me. Welcome to the Lore of Thetis, a series where we explore the mythology and secrets within the world of Dragon Age. Today's topic, Dwarves. Strong, bold, stocky, hard-headed, traditional, and beards. They are the children of the stone. Dwarves are one of the oldest races of Thetis, second only to the elves. The dwarves are masterful craftsmen known for their structures that last millennia. Dwelling on the ground, dwarves' tunnels once spanned the entirety of the continent in vast cave networks known as tides. Short in stature or bulky physiques, dwarves are naturally strong from generations of stonework. They possess hardy constitutions, rarely getting sick. Dwarves are unable to wield magic, do have a unique resistance to both magic and lyrium, able to safely mine the mineral better than any other race in Thetis. This unique resilience to Lyrium, along with their impressive craftsmanship, is complemented with the dwarves' unique ability to navigate the subterranean grounds known as Stone Sense. While the dwarves have a strong constitution, they do have a low fertility rate, believed to be caused by their close proximity to the dark spawn tank over the centuries. The slow pregnancy rate, along with their dwindling population, is cause for concern among dwarven society. Dwarves are renowned for their meticulous record keeping and vast archives they call the memories. Maintained by a record keeper known as the Shaperit, who says dwarven history began tens of thousands of years ago. The memories recount a time when elves ruled the lands while dwarves reigned underground, when Thetis was devoid of humans. First making contact with their topside neighbors 1500 years before humans arrived to the continent. However, there are no known recorded memories detailing as what transpired before and after this first contact with elves. In the golden age of dwarven history, the empire expanded the majority of the underground, just as far as the Defensor Imperium did above. Dwarves freely traded with both the elves and the Imperium in its time. In the age of 1200 ancient, thanks to King Endrin Stonehammer, a strong relationship was forged with the Defensor Imperium's first archon, the Rhenius, to ensure that both mutually prosper in a lyrium trade that still persists today. To better govern the commercial aspects of mining and crafting, Stonehammer moved his kingdom to the ancestral seat of the mining and cement cast of Ozamar, negative 1170 ancient. As the kingdom flourished in wealth, so did they expand. Tigs were built under every human kingdom. The empire was enclosed by the most valuable of its tigs, being Kalsharak, Orzammar, Gundar, and Hormak. While each kingdom held its own assembly, each pledged their loyalty to the empire's capital. The dwarfs had truly achieved grand heights for their kingdom that had never been seen before or will ever be seen again. In negative 395 ancient, the Grand Dwarven Empire crumbled to his knees at the hands of the Darkspawn. These unearthly creatures, as if born from pure darkness, flooded the deep roads in a fury, disconnecting several tigs off from one another. The devastation and speed that came from these unknown enemies divided the dwarfs causing the loss of numerous tigs, driving the race to the brink of extinction. The dwarves were the first witness to what became known as the Blight and its first victims. For more than a century, the Blight raged on. The dwarves fought against the Darkspawn, barely able to hold off the mass hordes, until negative 255 Ancient, when the greatest smith of dwarven history, Keridan, created the Anvil of the Void and forged the first golem. The greatest weapon the dwarves would ever possess, sculpted from stone and metal, the golems gave the dwarves the upper hand to push back the Darkspawn and granted them the reprieve needed to reclaim some of their lost territory. A therapy halted all too soon when Keridan disappeared into the Deep Roads, along with the Anvil and Naj of how to craft golems. It was only with the unification of the four kingdoms that the dwarves managed to survive. The Blight would eventually end, as Darkspawn retreated with the death of the Archdemon Dumont. The servants declared victory, yet the war raged on for the dwarves. Even without the Archdemon, the Blighted creatures continued their rampage against the dwarves. This relentless onslaught led to King Threestone to seal the Deep Roads, causing all the remaining kingdoms to fall by negative 15 Ancient, leaving only Ozamar. For centuries, Ozamar found little relief after these drastic choices as the Darkspawn still pressured them. The kingdom saw a steady decline as they lost more of their outlining ties. Even so, the dwarves are steadfast in their tradition and continue their alliance with the surface. In the ages since, the Dwarven Empire has not risen to its once great status, but ties such as Kal Sharak and Kal Haral have been rediscovered and reclaimed as they push back against the Darkspawn. The dwarves thrive on their traditions. The hierarchy is maintained by a social structure that separates houses into seven distinct professions known as caste. Noble, warrior, artisan, smith, mining, 
merchant, and servant, each responsible for maintaining their craft to benefit their society. From the warrior cast defending the kingdom against the dark spawn, to the mining cast acquiring lyrium so the merchant cast may set it to the surface. The caste system of the dwarves work in unison to keep their culture alive and as a way for a dwarf to make a living. However, there are those within dwarven society who have no caste to live on, the casteless. Seen as lower class citizens either stripped of their caste for crimes or born without one, the casteless struggle to survive within dwarven society, often turn into crime. Most dwarves will often go their entire life without stepping foot on the surface, only doing so to respond to the call of the Grey Wardens in the wake of a blight. Those born on the surface, however, may never see the kingdom they originated, as they are castes from birth. Honor is key to dwarven culture. Each member of a caste family are diligent to never dishonor their house, as it may result in less work for their family within that respect to caste, or at worst result in their entire house being exiled and stripped of their caste. To protect their honor, dwarves often settle disputes and provings, a public arena where battles take place in front of the masters of dwarven society. Often setting disputes and matches to the death, as it is far more accepting to lose one individual than for two houses to slaughter one another. There are those among dwarf society who value honor in the survival of their culture so much that they give up all they have to defend the kingdom. The Legion of the Dead are hardened warriors even amongst the dwarves who endlessly fight the darkspawn, only answering directly to the ruler of Ozamar. So dedicated to their cause that upon joining the Legion, they hold a funeral for themselves as they relinquish their lives to fight until they die against the darkspawn within the deep roads. Unlike most cultures in Thetis, dwarves do not worship deities that reflect their likeness, but rather the earth itself which they call the stone. They believe the stone to be alive, seeing themselves as its children. They respect her, fear her, cherish her, and give thanks to her for protecting and providing them with her bounty. The dwarves have practiced this religion for 2,000 years. The other cultural religion is the honoring of their ancestors. Dwarves who live strong and noble lives are believed to have given the stone strength when they have died, thus becoming one of the ancestors. Those who are seen as disgraceful make the stone weak and are therefore eternally rejected, such as the castus and surface dwarves. Then there are those who have been risen to the status of a paragon, reared as living ancestors, when a dwarf has been elected a paragon, a new noble house is established, bearing their name. The Paragon's accomplishments are meticulously recorded in the memories. These living ancestors are held so highly that their work can surpass even the throne. You would be hard pressed to find a dwarf, even one born on the surface, that doesn't hold their worship of the stone. Sexuality plays a large part in preserving dwarven culture. Due to the low birth rate within the race, those in noble caste and other higher caste positions are expected to marry only within their caste or higher. Female dwarves have little input on their sexuality. Regardless of caste, they are valued for the ability to bear children. While the female nobles are expected to protect their virtue, then pressured to marry and have children, the males are expected, if not encouraged, to be promiscuous as to bolster population numbers. A female's fertility is so valued that caste females often facilitate themselves as noble hunters as they seek the attention of noble males in the hopes of advancing themselves and their family into a noble house. Caste's males, however, have it more difficult, as they can only hope to sorry a child with high caste women who are discouraged from pursuing affairs with them or are not interested in doing so. Once a child is born, the sex of that child determines its caste. The child takes on the same caste as its same sex parent. If the father is of the warrior caste and the child is born a male, then he too will also be in a warrior caste. However, if one of the parents is casteless and a child is born of the same sex as the casteless parent, then the child will also be classified as casteless. This perpetuates the cycle of poverty in dwarven culture. Even despite dwindling numbers, the dwarves' traditional mindset do not accept the casteless, even that of a newborn who has had no opportunity to prove themselves. Ozamar is ruled by a monarchy, overseen by a king or queen in a senatorial house made of nobles called the assembly. For a noble to hold a seat in the assembly, they must be able to trace their line back to a paragon. The assembly often acts as an advisor to the crown, holds the power to approve or veto acts of the throne, propose policies, promote paragons, and elect a new king or queen. When electing a new ruler, the vote is carried by majority vote amongst the assembly. The former ruler may nominate a successor, usually their eldest child, but may also be a younger child or a member of another house entirety. Yet ultimately who succeeds the throne is left to the assembly. There is a vie for the crown. As fighting, blackmail, and assassination ensues, this means to discredit or eliminate competition until the assembly agrees on a ruler. 
The king or queen may propose laws, but the assembly may block these actions, thus limiting the throne's ability to affect domestic law or international relations. The throne is more in control as a commander-in-chief, deploying troops as needed and training warriors. The other responsibility of the assembly is to title paragons. When a dwarf is declared a paragon, it elevates their family to noble status and gives them a seat in the assembly. However, this is a rare occurrence, as dwarven society is strict and cautious when nominating paragons, as it is the highest honor one may obtain, even above that of the throne. While dwarves have maintained detailed records of their history, some have still been lost to them over the centuries, and through the darkspawn taking over their territories. Their memories only go back so far. One huge piece of their history that has been forgotten is their connection to the Titans. Ancient earth-shaping giants that may very well be what the dwarves call the stone itself. Its blood is delirium that is rooted throughout the deep roads that the dwarves mine, and the stone that he emits is the voice of the titans calling to its children. Once connecting all the dwarves together within a single mine, the dwarves are cut off from the titans and cast into the race we see today. As to what severed this connection is unknown, or there was the elven gods who hunted these pillars of the earth, or something else we cannot say. The lore is still buried amongst the lost tides of the deep roads. The dwarves are a fascinating race and the best craftsmen that can be found within Thetis. However, soon they may find the rest of Thetis catching up to them if they remain cut off from the rest of the world because of loyalty to tradition. Or perhaps even worse, their entire race may be wiped out by the dark spawn if they remain as stubborn as the stone that birthed them. This has been the lore of Thetis. I hope you all enjoyed our exploration into the culture of the dwarves. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to learn more about the world of Dragon Age. Let me know your thoughts on today's subject as well as topics you'd like to see me cover. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time. Finaral and Unsolved.